All right, another day, another week. We got another Incarnon I got to cover this week. So we got the Sybaris Prime. It has just gotten a very cool, interesting Incarnon. It turns into an interesting explosive weapon. So we're going to cover the evolutions, how I built it with my mod configurations, test in the simulacrum, and then we'll go do a Steel Path mission with Jade and see how it uh, works in an actual mission instead of just testing in the simulacrum. So let's cover those evolutions. All right, third time's the charm. So the Sybaris Prime Incarnate on Evolution 1 turns from a 2-burst into a 4-burst with Blast Innate status, which is very nice because it applies it really rapidly. Evolution 2 will give us two options, Well Rehearsed and Blazing Barrel. Both of these get plus 15 in base damage, but Well Rehearsed on consecutive weak point hit, which is a headshot, will increase your base damage by 5 three times, while Blazing Barrel will increase on fire your multi-shot by 5%, which will stack up 10 times. To me, this is better because overall, multi-shot is king in most scenarios over just flat damage so we're going to go with blazing barrel next up is evolution 3 evolution 3 will give us extended volley ready retaliation and marksman's hand extended volley will increase your base mag not your incarnon by 12 to me that's not valuable at all ready retaliation when you reload from empty will give you plus six percent reload speed to me this isn't really that necessary because while it may affect how your incarnon swaps the reload is two seconds and the incarnon changing is really quickly so i don't see it as useful so i'm going to go with marksman's hand which gives us my 60 percent weapon recoil because this weapon does actually uh recoil kind of hard Finally, we have Evolution uh, 4. Evolution 4 will give us Elemental Dominance, Reaver's Rapture, and Survivor's Edge. Elemental Dominance will increase your base stat chance by 8%. The effects double in your Incarnon form. Re uh, Reaver's Rapture on a full burst hit will give you plus 20% damage, and in this resets on reload, including Incarnon swapping. And the Survivor's Edge will give you plus 5% crit chance and 10% stats chance. To me, Survivor's Edge overall gives a better, uh, well-rounded increase in stats that I like because Reaver's Rapture goes away whenever you uh, swap in from base to Incarnon or reload, so it's basically null and void. And Elemental Dominance is nice if you're going for a full status build, but that's dependent on which version of the servers you're running. So we're gonna also go with Survivor's Edge. Let's cover those mod configurations, shall we? So we have three builds for you. We have a viral one, a corrosive cold, and one for the corpus. When it comes to this, you only need three forma. You don't need to use a match vigilante supplies. So I just did because I'm stupid. On all three builds are using the uh, galvanized mods. Each one is using uh, prime cryo rounds. With the first one, we're using viral heat, hellfire, effect clip, prime cryo rounds with rifle elementalist and battle sense. So we'll be doing a primary merciless, but you could also use a primary deadhead modification with this build the corrosive cold one same thing except now we're using corrosive and cold so we're obviously going to use primary frostbite it's a phenomenal one it gives you crit damage and more multi-shot which is great finally when it comes to the last one which is for the corpus you don't need magnetic i like it because it helps with the um eximus units so with the case of the uh arcane if you have it maxed out use primary blight i sadly don't because this thing is only in uh the circuit and i'm not lucky enough to get a ton of them so i'm not paying the ridiculous price in platinum either so let's test out each one of these builds and then go do a steel path mission so the first one we're going to show off is the viral heat build so with even though i'm not using primary uh primary deadhead i'm still going to aim for the head because that's what i'm used to doing so we can get the incarnate on up and i see once you start getting your uh, arcane proc and your galv mods stacked this weapon does hit quite hard but what about the incarnon that's the whole point of the uh weapon so well that's yep yeah that's 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 what i expected it's like i said it applies the blast status effect really quickly and hits really hard especially since it can hit aoe let's show off the next one so next up is the corrosive and cold build so we're fighting enemies with armor so as you see thanks to how primary uh frostbite works we're going to be getting more crit damage and more multi-shot as we continue to use uh well this weapon thanks to how cold affects the uh enemies and since once you get full cold stacks you deal more crit damage so how does it feel with the incarnon well i think that kind of just gave it away holy obviously it's going to hit quite hard especially since well the blast gets affected by primary frostbite so let's show off the uh one for the corpus and now we have the corpus build so like i said if you had a primary blight one i would obviously use that over primary merciless since well we're using toxin which is the weakness to corpus enemies and as you see it is doing its job properly every enemy has no issue getting killed so i'm going to mix it with our usual hound pet which is recruit we're going to go to still path mission we're going to test how it works in an actual mission instead of people who don't move at me so i don't want to take up too much of your time so if you want to see more stuff like this make sure you guys hit that like button do subscribe and turn on that bell for post notifications so I always get notified whenever i post another video i do appreciate making these videos for y'all and i do like all the comments y'all leave down below asking questions giving uh uh what is the word information about what i may have gone wrong what y'all may change in your builds etc and stuff like that because remember these are guides for y'all to understand how the weapon works not the definitive way to use the weapon etc shut up ordis either way enjoy the rest of the video 
All right, and here we are in the Steel Path mission, like I said. So basically, the reason I bring Jade to missions like these is primarily for Ophanium Eyes. The reason I really like Ophanium Eyes is because it can show off the weapon a little better when I'm not being, you know, uh, attacked from everything known to this side of the planet. And as you see in a non-controlled setting, you can see higher numbers than what I was getting in a controlled setting. You're seeing 1.2 million, 824 thousands. But what about the Incarnon? That's just the base weapon. Well, the Incarnon is very similar. You're going to see really high numbers and a lot of ag clear potential. Now, why is there a lot of ag clear potential? Mm, well, it's Blast. Blast is easy at dealing with crowds, not the best at single target, but that's the point of viral and heat. As you see, it has really good ammo economy despite shooting a four burst. Hell, there was 120 something red crit. That was really nice to see. But as you see, this weapon does real good against basic enemies. So we need to obviously fight the usual that you see in a uh, Sopath mission. Where is the Acolyte? I'll return when we see that Acolyte. Hold on. Bang. And there goes an Eximus unit. So I'll see you when the Acolyte's here. Okay, now that it decided to spawn another one, I didn't feel like doing the one at five minutes. Instead, I went for the one at 10 minutes, and I should have just went with the one at five minutes. Now I'm having to deal with my least favorite of all of them. There he is. I'm not dealing with that crap, so we're just going to... There you go. But as see, it didn't uh, take long to kill him outside of him putting a mag bubble on me. So it obviously took a second longer. Ooh, wow, that's that is two Argon right there. But as saw, it did quite well on a 10 minute Acolyte. So I will see you back in my orbiter with my final thoughts on the Cybris Prime Incarnon. All right, so what are my final thoughts on the Cybris Prime Incarnon? To me, this is a phenomenal Incarnon, one of the best they've made. If I had to compare this to any of them, it'd be like when I first acquired the Burst on Prime Incarnon. It's powerful, it's fun, it's useful, and it might even get more use than my Strun Prime. As you see, you can see what I like using. I don't know why the Nodorok is up here. I actually don't like using this thing at all. I don't know. It's weird. But the Super Prime Incarnon is a phenomenal weapon, and I do recommend everyone pick it up and give it a try. Other than that, tell me what you want to see down in the comments below. Whatever you want to see next time, do say it, because I would be curious, because I can review a lot of different things for people. Other than that, Hit that like button, do subscribe, and turn on that bell for post notifications. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out.